Alright, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a nice, simple signature for beginners, so don't I don't want any nasty comments about it. it's too simple. First, open up your document. You want a nice signature size, anywhere from 300 width to 450 width, which is pretty big, so I'm going to go with 375, and height anywhere from 100 to 200, so I'm going to do 120. So this is a quite small signature right there. Uh, I've seen people do smaller, but this is as small as I will ever go. Alright, next choose your render. I have a lot on my computer already because I'm that kind of person. Let's see. Alright, I like this one because you notice how it has the nice flow to it. Whenever you're selecting a render, you always want one with good flow. It's just, you need it. You see how this his cape sticks out a little bit too far, so I'm going to have to smudge that away and just sort of kill it. But you still see how it's got nice depth, his foot is larger, and it's in front and stuff, and the sword, which is in the back. So, let's get this onto our signature, and it's obviously a little bit, well, it's just a little bit too big to use. So, hold control and hit T to open up the transform and then hold shift as you're doing this so it doesn't get all lopsided and there you go that's pretty well sized you don't want it too small but you don't want it too big right and I'm just gonna get rid of my render so I'm not lagging my computer with all this junk oh, I think it undid my trend. alright never mind I'm just gonna leave it how it is alright now uh, take out your move tool which I've already got moved it's at the top right the very top right of your tools panel alright and hold down alt and basically what this will do is it'll duplicate your render as you click and drag it across the screen and wait fill the entire thing now uh, you want to merge all of these layers so hold control and hit E to merge each one down and then leave the bottom one and drag it up to the top so you've got your good render on top alright with the back Take out your smudge tool, and this is like one of the most important things that Photoshop does now. It's called scattered brushing. What you need to do, uh, up in the top right, there's this thing that says brushes, or you can hit F5 to open it. And then you need to choose your brush. You need to choose that one since it's a nice chalk thing. Now, shape dynamics up here. Oh, shoot, you can't see that. Alright, hold on. Alrighty, there you go, okay. Size jitter is basically, it'll make it jitter from low to high size. Same with angle jitter. You don't need to work with the minimum diameter or anything. Basically, keep them all at 100 for this. Then go to scattering and turn the scatter eh, right around 250. And that should do it right there. Alright, so when we do this now, you notice we've got the smudge tool out. It'll scatter our smudge. Uh, what am I doing? Oh yeah. Sorry, my computer's lagging from all this stuff that's open. I got Audacity. I got like, I got the works, man. But anyway, so I'm just gonna smudge this around so it's not too noticeable what it is, and then I stole this from the rest. All right, I just noticed that this render is pretty poorly cut, but I'm just gonna deal with it because, I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can't see it, but uh. Alright, now first, go back to your render layer, it's going to be on top, duplicate it twice, this is going to be a nice simple signature for you guys. Alright, and on the top one, it'll be layer 1, copy 3. Just smudge the heck out of this thing with the same brush, same smudge settings. Well, don't smudge the heck out of it, but just smudge it enough so that you get it quite evenly distributed over your signature. And then set this layer to linear dodge and erase the stuff over the face and some of the body alright um, next you gotta determine where your light source is coming from you notice we've got a highlight on the back so we know the light is going to be behind him which also means that the front has to be darker so let's make a new layer and put a light source behind him this is going to be kinda difficult for you newer guys bear with me take out your brush tool 
and make it a size 160 hardness zero soft brown brush and select your color to be white now just put one nice size thing you notice how that's not behind him though so what we need to do we need to get our eraser make it about 63 hardness 65 hardness around there and then erase where it doesn't need to be light in other words pretty much anywhere there's no highlight then on another new layer set this one to soft light and brush in black where it needs to be darker hold on a second that was oops alright there we go it's gonna be darkest around here so let's give that some extra it's gonna be dark the bottom of his sleeve uh... that doesn't look too dark but we'll darken it a little bit anyway and a little bit on his... no no that, that makes him look like he's got a goatee I'll leave that, I'm too lazy to change it alright so now we've got our lighting set up alright now let's do some nice looking vector-ish look stuff take out your elliptical marquee tool right click on the thing that looks like a little ant box with the rectangle thing and then it'll open up this menu elliptical voila okay create a new layer hold down shift when you do this this is like much easier if you do that because it'll make it circular and just you notice how I've got that circle there check that out oh yeah alright now hold shift for your next select and then it'll add to the earlier selection and keep holding shift and you'll keep adding and make a bunch of little oops undo that and make a bunch of these little circle selection things and we're gonna make this look see I keep doing that scatterbrained alright and see that's like the third time I did that and I'm on camera too alright you guys not know who I was, how stupid I am. four times is the limit I'm not gonna do it again okay now you can either fill this or stroke this I'm gonna stroke it because you need to learn this eventually anyway uh, go edit you can't see that but edit stroke and then set it to inside three pixels and the color white to give it a nice clean look then deselect control D then you can pretty much set this wherever you can rotate it by control T and then transform I'll put this right there and to give this some depth I'm going to erase anything oh shoot I need to alright uh... don't do what I'm doing this is secret secret stuff and you're not allowed to know this because you're not smart enough yet basically what I just did was a load selection I'm going to show you anyway alright basically you go over to your layers panel, uh, panel hold control and then click on the little display picture and it'll select everything that's in that you notice how I got the perfect render cut now alright then uh... Was sort of clear and you notice how that one looks like it's behind him which is amazingly cool alright now you can't really determine much between the background and the foreground so I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go image adjustments brightness contrast turn the brightness down and the contrast up even though that looks like crap alright oh boy I'm running out of time you guys so I'm just gonna hurry this up some more uh, remember that uh, f those few layer things you copied you're gonna need another one now go filter wait now you notice layer one copy two it's another one of those render things you duplicated near the beginning Re uh, filter brush strokes spatter turn both of the things up to maximum and then you're gonna get a really ugly looking grungy yuck mess and then basically just erase anything over the face and hair leave a little bit on the outline of his body and set this to linear dodge and erase anything that looks too light alright uh... i'm trying to think of other stuff i can do quickly Oh wait, 
I forgot you guys, I'm a direct